Okay, well, welcome everybody. My name is Kenny Connolly. I'm here with my friend, Nick Blevins, uh, one of the creators of the new family retention plan. And uh, it's an exciting project that we, um, that several of us put together to help churches do a better job of retaining families who come to visit their church for a time. Nick, thanks for being here. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm ready to talk about follow-up plans, right? That's right. So this video, this is a short video. This is a bonus video. So if you have purchased the um, new family uh, retention plan, then this uh, comes with the project, uh, with the whole resource that you downloaded. Uh, but uh, if you just found this video, then uh, you're, we're going to give you a sneak peek behind this massive resource that's been created that, um, that you're going to love what we talk about here today. But it's actually what we're going to talk about today in this video. It's going to make you really hungry for the rest of the content because um, we're really pulling the curtain back to see something uh, that I think is one of the most exciting parts of this whole resource. And I'm not just saying that because I wrote it. Uh, it's actually something that's going to be really helpful because if you think about it, when it comes to retention, you want to create a powerful, irresistible experience when that family shows up. You want to do it again when they show up a second time. You want to do it on your website when people come to check you out for the first time. Like all those things are huge. But a major piece of getting somebody to come back is how you communicate and follow up with them. So, and how you do that uh, shows you how personal you are, how uh, your attention to detail, your um, just even the way that you invite somebody without uh, becoming pushy or overwhelming them. So there's like a strategy to all of this. So this is, this is big and this is a big part of the entire framework, right, Nick? Yes, absolutely. In fact, I think, again, I'm biased because I'm part of one of the creators for it, but I'd buy it just for this plan. And we're going to give like a, a peek at that. And part of it's because I know from our church experience, we have kind of redone this a few times in our church history. But the time I remember most recently was about three or four years ago. And we got help from an outside voice who came in and helped us uh, think through our plan. And I would say our plan was pretty good. Like it was probably 85%. You know what I mean? But there's been a huge difference in taking what we learned from him and analyzing our own plan and then coming up with basically the same thing you created here that took us to 95, 97% effectiveness. And now we're retaining more people. There's less people falling through the gaps. And we've all had that in our churches where it's like, wait a minute, we had this many new people. How are you not getting more of them to stick? And we've talked before about how retention is kind of like the low hanging fruit of church growth because it's way easier. None of it's easy but it's way easier to retain twice as many first time guests than it is to get two times as many first time guests. You know what I mean? Once they're there, there's a lot more that we can do to help them come back, get connected and all that stuff. And I think this follow up plan is the core of it. Yeah, this is a, this is huge. And so part of this is, um, is having a comprehensive plan for how you intend to communicate with uh, people when they visit your church, uh, how you communicate with them when they maybe fill out a, um, you know, an online registration because they're going to come for the first time. How do you communicate with them when they come for their second time or their third time? And here's the thing that I think a lot of churches, why they drown in this, like why they never really do this well, is because if you think about it, um, there's probably, you know, there's about a, you know, a dozen different ways that somebody can interact with your church for the first time, second time, third time, when you consider all those options. And uh, if you don't communicate in a unique way around all those different ways they can connect with you, then you, you can come across feeling very automatic or very impersonal. And, um, but it, then if you would try to, you know, approach this from a personal standpoint, you can immediately become overwhelmed. Because if you're seeing, like, if you're a church that's seeing 10 new families visit every week or 30 new families visit, or even five new families every week, very quickly, you're going to have a lot of families in your, you know, in your bank of new families that you're trying to get to come back for the second or third time or whatever it may be. And so it's, quite frankly, it's pretty overwhelming. So what we attempted to do in uh, this new family retention plan is actually create a framework for communication and follow-up. We actually created scripts. So this includes uh, texting scripts and email scripts um, for people at every stage of the retention process. We kind of created this five part uh, framework for you know, moving people towards uh, visitors to connection. 
And, uh, but then also recognize, you'll see this in a second, is that in every stage of somebody coming, there's multiple sub stages because you don't want to communicate to everyone the same way. For example, if, uh, if Nick comes to visit my church for the first time uh, this weekend, I'm going to communicate to him and just like you would as well, very intentional ways this week. But then all of a sudden, next week comes around, Nick doesn't come back, but then a new group of people come. And so I have to make this decision. Uh, I'm probably not going to connect, like throw Nick into the same group of communication with the people who just came this last week. But there's a good chance that, you know, Nick just didn't come this Sunday. People don't come every, to church every Sunday. So what's my plan to connect with Nick two, three, or four weeks after he came for the first time? And then what happens if, as you know, it's been two months or three months since Nick, like it's not worth writing him off. Do I just throw him in this like, you know, general church email, which is what a lot of churches do. And, uh, or do I actually, you know, put him in this, this group of people that I'm communicating. And then the question is, how long do I leave him there? You know, what point do I finally give up or do I, or what happens if Nick comes back for a second time, then, then where do I go? So as you can see, it gets very complicated. And what we try to do is recognize the complexity of um, communicating and following up with all these people who are at different stages in your retention plan and make it really clear and concise and, and simple, or well, as simple as it can be. And so we're gonna share with you a chart that um, if you purchase this resource, it's yours. If, if you didn't purchase it, you're gonna see it. And, you're gonna, and usually, depending on how you respond to this says a lot about you. You're either gonna be, uh, you're gonna be like very excited and like, you know, like you're gonna salivate. You're like, this is amazing. Or you're gonna, you're gonna be completely overwhelmed. And so that's going to say a lot about, you know, your personality type. And that's okay. If you get overwhelmed, that's fine. There's probably somebody on your team that will salivate at the, at the site of this. And you need to put them in charge of this process. So, uh, Nick, you want to say anything before we, uh, before we show the holy grail of the communication follow-up process? The holy grail. I was going to say, you could probably be excited and overwhelmed because we have shared this on our free webinar, too. And people said that. They were both uh, overwhelmed but excited about it. And... And if you don't have this resource, you're probably going to hit pause and like screenshot it or whatever, which is fine because this is a great part of it. If you want to take it and use that to create something for your church, that's awesome. The resource, though, helps do a lot of that work for you. So you're not creating the whole thing from scratch. But even this plan alone would be really helpful to implement in your church. So let's see it. All right. So here it goes. I'm sharing my screen here and uh, you should be able to see this is fine. This is the new family retention plan follow up overview. And again, like what we said here is there are five stages to our um, framework from when people come for the first time, which we want everybody who comes that we, when they show up, they feel expected. That's our goal. When they come for the second time, we want them to feel seen. I'm sorry, that was, that was wrong. Uh, I, I got that wrong. Stage one is they have not come yet. So we want, we want people who are visiting our website, you know, they're inquiring of coming. We want them to to feel expected. When they come for the very first time, we want them to feel seen. When they come for the third time, we want them to feel, sorry, for the second time, we want them to feel remembered. And then stage four is we're typically trying to connect them to uh, some sort of a group, second step, next step experience, which help, helps them feel included. And then stage five, where we consider they are retained, we want them to feel known. So that's, this is kind of a little, little mixed in of our framework in here as well. And what you'll see here is um, all the categories of communication underneath each stage. And we're going to kind of explain what that looks like here in a second. Uh, we kind of put it in uh, box A and box B, box C for most of these stages. And really the way, what that means is kind of the example I used earlier is that um, if Nick comes and visit my, visits my church, um, he's going to be in stage one and I'm going to communicate to him very specifically. But as soon as he isn't new as a first time visitor anymore, then he's going to slip down to another box because I still want to communicate to people who have come like within the last month or two in a very intentional way, but I'm going to communicate to them differently than the person who came for the first time six months ago and the person who came for the first time one week ago. So, um, so what we've done and when you download this resource and you access all the scripts is we've created, um, email and text scripts because in texting primarily happens when somebody comes, we typically will utilize text that week. Like, Hey, you were here. So good to see you. But as time goes along, texting kind of it, um, it, uh, it, 
it, it breeds familiarity. Like, you know, like you kind of expect that, but if you get a text from somebody you haven't seen in six months and you only met them once, that's going to feel a little awkward. It's going to feel a little bit like, Hey, why are you texting me? So we, we've kind of taken that into account that we, we utilize text scripts early on in the visit and we move primarily just to email later on in the visit and, uh, or later on in that, in that timeline. Uh, also recognizing that anytime somebody comes for the first time or a second time or a third time in that first week, there's a rhythm toward communication when they've been here just that week. And then when it's been a week or two, communication slows down, the, the immediacy of it slows down. So all of this is included in the resource that we've created. And, um, and we've, we've included actual scripts that we use in our churches, scripts that you might use in your church. What we found is that um, you may, the script may just be like the starting place for you, the template for you, that then you can actually uh, recreate. And what we did also is we gave you one script for, let's, let's look, look for example, is uh, uh, here in stage two. And let's say even as box B here, this is, this is for people who are, who have come to your church for the first time and you're inviting them to come back. Box B is basically anybody, it's been two to four months since they've come to your church. So it's still, they're still kind of a warm lead. They're not a hot lead. They're, they're still kind of a warm lead. It's very likely that they could come back and visit again. And so in this box here, we're, we're suggesting that you email them once, once a week, I'm sorry, once a month to remind them to come back or so. Now we gave you one script to communicate to them, but here's the deal. If um, you're, you're, you're probably not going to want to send the same exact email every month because all of a sudden when they see your email again and it, or they search by your email and they see the same email, it looks like you're stuck in, you know, an automation relay that you're just getting the same email. It's, it's very predictable. So we're going to actually even suggest like um, when you get this kit and all these resources that you, uh, you personalize that email but then you write two more versions of that same email. So that way you've got a, you know, the, the month one email, the month two email, the month three email, they all say exactly the same thing, but just in a slightly different way. So that way it feels fresh. It feels personal. It feels like they're not getting an email from a machine. They're getting it from a person. But when you do the hard work, when somebody on your team does the hard work of setting all this up, it can mostly be automated to where all you're doing is every week, somebody's gonna sit down and they're gonna look at all the people who are at various stages of your retention plan. And if somebody visited for the second time, they're gonna move from stage two to stage three. Um, and, and if they visit for the second time, they're gonna be in box A of stage three. If somebody else is maybe they came for the, you know, for the first time, but it's officially been a month now, they're gonna move from box A to box B. So at the beginning of the week, uh, uh, every week, somebody on your team has to move people around, moving them from box A to box B, or move from stage one to stage two, or stage three to stage four. Like all the movement that has to happen, probably you're gonna set up like a variety of reports, that you're running attendance reports, you're running registration reports, all those sorts of things, look in the calendar. And probably if you put the right person on this, they could probably update all of it, you know, within an hour, you know, or less, probably. Then you're gonna probably have a set automated communication point that you have an email that's going to go to everyone in box a you know stage one and that's going to happen every week you're going to have that happen box a box a box a in every single stage is probably a weekly email but box b is usually a monthly email that's probably going to happen on the first monday or first tuesday of every month box c is a, probably a quarterly email that happens you know the first Monday of each quarter. And so most of this, you're like the person who's going to run this is going to have a calendar, a community communication calendar of what emails go out on what weeks, but probably almost all of them on Monday afternoon, they can sit down again, probably in one or two hours can make sure that this automated email goes out to all the right people and all the right boxes. And the people who are receiving this, it doesn't feel like they just got this very generic, very vague email inviting them to take you know, a step, but it was a very specific step, helping them connect. And we actually even encourage to at different places in here that you actually make it even less about you just inviting them to come back, but actually sharing a resource with them to help them 
as a parent, you know, or, or whatever different way. So that it feels natural, feels helpful. And so, so you're going to see as you dive into the project, into this resource, you're going to see a communication follow-up plan in every single stage. And it follows the same format of, of stage one, box A and B, stage two, box A, B, and C, uh, all the way through. And, and you're going to see the scripts in each one. And so once you dive in and see it on one stage, it's going to look very similar in all the other stages. This is probably maybe one of the biggest projects you're going to take in personalizing it is because you have to go through and take every single script, probably load it up in your, you know, MailChimp or whatever your communication uh, uh, resources are, whatever you use to send out text and create those template emails and have them ready to go out. And then you get into a system where it just runs every single week, every single month, every single quarter, and people are communicated the right information at the right time around what their next step is. And it's, you're gonna have much more success at getting people to come back because it feels like they're being personally invited. Uh, okay, that was a lot of information. Nick, what it, any, any last things, maybe something that I missed that would be helpful? Yeah, I would just add, I know for us, we use our church management system for it and not every church management system is good for it. But if it is, what's nice is in our case, it's the place we communicate through, but it's also the place where we track the progress. So it's really easy to say, okay, all these people that are in stage two, box A, the email is already in there. You know, the canned email is built in, in there and we're, we can just literally hit a button and then they'll all get it. Right. But what I love about it too, is if you do want to do something a little different, which I would recommend you do, you can. So for instance, is there's people let's say are in box B, they did not come back a second time. Well, instead of just sending that canned email that's ready, which is helpful some months, maybe you realize, you know what, we're starting a new series this Sunday. I'm actually gonna use two paragraphs from the canned email. I'm gonna write a separate paragraph just about the series. Don't wanna miss it, starts this Sunday. So it still gives you like 80, 90% of the work is done. Now you gotta do the work on the front end, right? Like you said, and customize it. So it'll be a lot of work to implement this plan, but then running it like you're talking about isn't as much, isn't as difficult. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because uh, I didn't really specify that of when you hear all this, like, okay, so where do you talk about moving people? You talk about, you know, um, the boxes, like, what is that? Uh, is that a, you know, is that like a spreadsheet or is that a, like a database? And for most of us, it's the database you already pay money for every, uh, you know, every month, you know, for us. And I think you, uh, Nick, you use uh, Church Community Builder like we do as well. And so they have an entire system built into this called process queues. And the process queues, have those emails, you can program those emails already booted in there. So as soon as you move somebody from one process queue to the next, it automatically sends them the email. So again, in this, as you go along in this, it might, some of these aspects and parts might actually be easier uh, because you're utilizing software that has this stuff already kind of baked into it. So that's super helpful. And like you said too, and we kind of reference that in there as well, um, that you have to take into account, like if it is, if it is December, and your communication is probably going to include inviting them to, you know, a Christmas Eve service or Easter or, you know, back to school or whatever it is. And so all those things invite you the opportunity to be human, to be personable and, uh, and those things as well. Okay. So that's enough, I think, to give you a little bit of an overview of what you can expect, the immensity of the project that you have in front of you. But once you set it up, it runs like clockwork and, and, and it helps your people feel connected and, uh, and is far less overwhelming than, um, than the prod than this whole process actually is. Okay. So thank you so much. And, uh, let us know if you have any questions and, uh, or if you need help in setting this up.